Good afternoon. I'm really uh, excited to be here. Um, my name is Kineret Segal, and I'm part of the engineering team in Stockware. I am the team lead of the uh, team that is in charge of the Sharp system. And this talk is about Sharp. So uh, today I'm going to explain uh, what is Sharp. Uh, I'm going to talk about sharing uh, a single proof uh, 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 using Sharp. And uh, eventually I'm going to give some uh, examples of how one can use Sharp. So what is Sharp? Sharp stands for Shared Prover. Um, and we build the system on top of the Stone Prover. So Stone Prover was out there. It was uh, operating on mainnet, actually, even before we had Sharp. But uh, after a while, we uh, understood that for our need, for Stackware needs, uh, we want to have uh, a single system operating with the Stone Prover. Um, the motivation was actually the way that Stark protocol works. So uh, the way it works is that the verification of the proof is logarithmic in the input size. So it makes sense to have many inputs sharing a single proof because you can see, think about the uh, verification size basically as constant. So what is the input? Uh, the input for the, for the system is something which we call Cairo jobs. Cairo jobs are basically executed Cairo programs. So it's like the execution trace of the program. And as I said, this is a single system and different applications send uh, different uh, Cairo program, different logic to the same system. <coughs> so let's uh, talk a little bit about how we share the proof. So uh, before Sharp, as I said, we did have the Stone Prover operating on chain. And each application used its own prover. So we had like uh, spot, uh, spot um, systems and NFTs and perpetual. And each of them sends their own logic to the stone prover to be improved and eventually to be verified on chain by the Solidity verifier separately. And then uh, we decided to join forces. So we had all the applications, all the different applications sending their logic to uh, the, a single system, which we called Sharp. Um, so I would like to explain how exactly do we schedule these uh, jobs to the system. <coughs> OK, so first, in the first um, phase of the system, actually two years, uh, Sharp is operating for around three years. So the first two years, what we had was uh, linear scheduling. So we would send, um, we were getting jobs into the system and waiting for enough jobs to, to arrive. And then we batch them greedily. So first come, first serve until we, uh, until we, um, uh, we had enough jobs to send them to the prover, until we have uh, enough uh, jobs coming to the system. And then we uh, send them to the stone prover as a batch, and we created a single proof for all of them together. Then um, the proof went to the Solidity Verifier on-chain to be verified on-chain. And eventually, for each of the original jobs, we wrote some unique identifier on layer one that signals to the world, it, that, that's the way that the verifier signals to the world, that the original jobs were verified correctly. So this is, you can think about it as the, uh, this is, uh, the hash of the input with some, uh, the hash of the program with some, uh, with their output. And this is like the unique identifier to signals that uh, the original jobs were proved correct, were proved and verified correctly. And this was pretty good. Like we operated like this for two years and the system um, was doing uh, pretty well. So um, we could fit up to 128 million Cairo steps on a single proof. And this costed us 10 million gas. Um, but as I said before, the motivation is to have uh, more and more input on a single proof because the verification is basically constant. So we want to have it as much cheaper on chain as we can. For so we want to have many many inputs as we can. But we do. Uh, but with this linear setup, we had a few limitations, and I would like to mention uh, two main. Uh, two, two uh, critical ones. So first of all, it was the machine memory. So provers, to prove you need the memory, and the memory is proportional to the input size, linearly proportional. 
So if we would wait for more and more jobs to uh, get into the system and schedule too many jobs into a single proof, we would need really, really, mach uh, really heavy machines uh, that are really expensive and much less accessible uh, to be used. So that was a, a really heavy um, bottleneck. And secondly was latency. Because first of all, we needed to wait for enough jobs to get into the system. And then proving all of them at once would took a long time. So eventually, from the moment that the job arrived to the system until it got on chain, there, was, uh, there were many, many hours. So um, because of uh, these uh, issues, we decided uh, to move to the recursive uh, scheduling. And this is the way the system operates in the uh, past year. So what is the recursive scheduling? Uh, the same, we have jobs arriving to the system. Um, but now we don't wait for many of them to, uh, to arrive and then batch them together. We send each job separately to the prover, to the stone prover, to compute the proof for a single job. But this job, remember, I told you it's, very, uh, it's the same uh, uh, amount to verify um, uh, proof of, uh, of a single input or multiple inputs. So we don't want to send these jobs on chain because it will be very expensive per job. So what we did is that we wrote uh, the verifier in Cairo. So Stark Verifier is just, uh, it, it, it just a code. It, this code can be written in different languages. So we have one in Solidity. Uh, we have one in C++. This is just released today. One can write it in Python, whatever, and we wrote it in Cairo. So we send two proofs to the Cairo verifier to be verified on layer two. So now we have two verifications of these uh, four original um, proofs. But these are also jobs. These are, these are also Cairo programs that can be executed and generated as jobs. So now we send these jobs, these Cairo jobs, to the prover again to be proved that the verification of the proofs of the original jobs were, uh, verif were proved correctly. And we can do it again and again. Now we are left with two um, uh, proofs instead of four proofs, and we can repeat this process um, uh, until we get a single uh, proof of the verification of the proof of the verification, so and so. This is what we called the recursive tree. Its leaves are the original jobs, and each step is the proof of the verification of the uh, um, previous layer. And when this, G when this tree is big enough, meaning that there are enough uh, uh, jobs in the leaves, or when the jobs are waiting long enough, we uh, send the last proof to the verifier on chain. And this, is this verifier just verified that the last proof is valid, and again, write these unique identifiers of each of the original jobs to signal to the world that he verified that, the, the, that these uh, original jobs were proven verified correctly. OK, so this is for the, uh, the flow of the recursion. And uh, maybe some of you wonder, why do we need that? Because um, it sounds a bit wasteful, right? We now compute many more proofs than before. For actually, if you think about it, because of the way binary tree works, so for each job, we have extra job to prove. And I can tell you from my experience that debugging a system in a recursive flow which mu is much harder than ha debugging a linear flow system. So it sounds a bit wasteful maybe for some of you, but actually, uh, this setup has many, many benefits and uh, many surprising benefits. Combi the combination of the uh, benefits we get from from this flow is pretty surprising. So first of all, even though we do more computation off-chain, the, the, the cloud cost decreased. Because now, each chunk that we prove is much smaller, so we can use much cheaper machines. And eventually, even though we do, even though we do more computations, the cloud cost decreases. Secondly, uh, the L1 cost also decreases. And again, it's very counterintuitive, the fact that we don't pay on lower, clou lower cloud cost uh, on, the, on having a verification more expensive. But actually, it's less expensive. Because now, we remove this, um, this limitation of the memory of the machines. 
uh, and now we can fit much uh, more inputs into a single proof because the moment the job arrives, we just start proving it. We don't need to wait for them, and we don't have these heavy machines uh, off-chain that blocks us. So we can now fit up to 2 billion Cairo steps on a single proof. This is 16 times more than what I've mentioned before in the linear setup, and this is just a choice we made now in the setup, in the configuration of our system on mainnet for our needs, but this can be even much greater. And the same 10 million gas for this proof. Now, we have also shorter latency, which is also very surprising. Like We gain by lower cloud cost, lower L1 cost, and also lo shorter latency. How can it be? Because now we don't, want to wa we don't need to wait for many jobs to arrive to the system. The moment the job arrives, we just start proving it. And we parallelize the work in a way that eventually makes it uh, four times faster to go on chain. And lastly, um, we can now support much uh, more complicated built-ins in a, a easier because um, now the, the jobs that arrive to the system, they are being verified by the Cairo verifier and not the Solidity verifier. So now we can add complicated built-ins and verify them using the Cairo verifier and we don't need to change the logic in the Solidity verifier for that. So it makes our life easier. So recursion is really, really powerful, as I hope now you agree with me. And let's uh, talk how can we use this powerful system uh, uh, with different applications. So imagine you have some application and uh, which implements some complex logic, and you don't want to implement that logic on chain, or maybe you can even you maybe it's not possible even to implement it on chain. And so what can what can be done? You can write the logic in Cryo. This is possible because Cairo is a language that you can write everything, every logic that you want. Um, it's a Turing complete. And you can send these jobs to Sharp. Sharp uh, proves the, uh, the, the, the execution of the Cairo program off-chain and send it on-chain to be verified. And eventually writes the fact, the unique identifier on-chain. And now the contract of the application on chain can just check that the fact is there to promote its state. Uh, maybe some of you have Starknet on your mind, so that's how Starknet works, right? Instead of doing all the transactions of Starknet on chain, um, the, the Starknet OS sends uh, the, the jobs that updates the state of the system to Sharp and ju on chain just promotes its state based on the fact that Sharp proved that this state updates is correct. And there is uh, another really cool application for Sharp that one can use, which is uh, storage proofs. Um, that if I will have enough time, I'll, I'll present now. And if I want to. Uh, uh, managed to finish, so please, you are uh, very welcome to check uh, later on stage one. Herodotus and uh, Alex from Starkware uh, are going to talk about it. So what is storage proofs? Uh, imagine that uh, you want to know the state of the blockchain storage at any point in the past, uh, maybe from layer one or from uh, different, uh, um, from different, uh, from some layer two. Um, think, think about the use case of voting. So you want to enable um, entities to vote based on some amount of tokens or some asset they had a few blocks in the past. And this is something you can do from layer one. You can't, uh, from smart contract, check that a few blocks away, some entities had some amount of assets. So how can it be done using Sharp? So um, you can... Um, uh, you can create this structure, think about a Merkle tree, uh, that in some way index the history of the blockchain from genesis until the future, until the present. Um, and these roots, these roots that you see are just, they represent the ongoing history of the blockchain. And now, in order to prove this history, in order to prove that you can update from root i to root i plus one, you just need to write the Cairo program that uh, uh, represents the fact that there exists a series of blocks that can lead you from root i to root i plus one. 
And now when you prove this entire history and it goes on chain using these identifiers of the state update, if you want to, to access some uh, specific state, you can just go uh, to the relevant root and open, the, the, uh, open it and check the state. And I just finished, so um, I would, that, that was, that what, that was what we did in Starkware uh, using the really powerful stone prover. That was the system that we built and I would really like uh, to encourage you now that stone is out there to think about your needs and uh, your perspective and uh, use it in order to build your own powerful system. Thank you.